Hi, this is Pastor Jeff, and I want to continue with our Holy Week devotions. Holy Week begins with the, began with the triumphal entry, and we looked at the historical and the heavenly perspectives of Jesus' triumphal entry into Jerusalem. And then we looked at the introduction to the Feast of Passover, which is what this season is all about. And Passover began with Jesus' triumphal entry. In the Feast of Passover, this is one of God's great gatherings. The spring, summer, and fall harvest uh, are the time frames for the spring, summer, and fall feasts. Of course, the spring feast is made up of the Feast of of getting the leaven out, the Feast of Passover itself, and the uh, Passover lamb, and then the Feast of Firstfruits. And then the summer feast is the Feast of Pentecost. And then the fall feast is the Feast of Booze, which includes the uh, Rosh Hashanah, or Feast of Trumpets, Yom Kippur, or the Day of Atonement, and Booze, the uh, celebration and remembrance of their time in transition. Then we looked at Jesus as the fulfillment of Passover. Uh, Jesus is fulfilling everything in Scripture that's been revealed. He is the remedy promised and prophesied in Genesis 3.15, and he came to fulfill that purpose through the portal of his people. And uh, now today we uh, are enjoying the privilege of what he produced and provided for us, and we remember and we look back to that hinge of history called the life, death, burial, and resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ. And so today now we're looking at what's called Monday, Thursday. Now there was four days of um, inspecting the lamb for blemishes. So when Jesus came in on Sunday, uh, this is now on third, the end of the day, Thursday. And so Monday, Thursday is what's uh, what was been celebrated in church calendar since about the 14th century. Monday is from the Latin word mandate because um, it was in the upper room that Jesus gave the command in uh, John 13, 34. He says, a new commandment I give to you, that you love one another, even as I have loved you, that you would also love one another. And by this, all men will know that you are my disciples, if you have love for one another. This is the mandate of a believer, is to walk in the royal commandment of love. So Monday, Thursday is a mandate to walk in love, and it was uh, realized and expressed by Jesus in his ministry in the upper room. Uh, You remember he sent the disciples ahead. He had already made plans for uh, for this time together, for their Passover meal together, and it was also the the time of which he was going to introduce the new covenant in his blood. They didn't understand all of this, but at the same time, this is, was his preparation. This was his intention from the beginning. So in the upper room, we, there's a number of areas in Scripture where we could look at the mandate that Jesus gave, but I think it's most clear in John 13. Uh, in verse 1 of John 13, it says, Now before the feast of the Passover, Jesus, knowing that his hour had come, that he should depart out of this world to the Father, having loved his own who were in the world, he loved them to the end. So he is our model. He lived it. He loved it. We received from it. And uh, he loved them to the end. And this was the beginning of the end of his earthly ministry and the actual fulfillment, the apex of his uh, purpose to accomplish the Father's will. So as he uh, demonstrated love before he proclaimed love and actually provided for the means to walk in love, which is the new covenant, uh, we see that uh, these scriptures um, in, in John 13, are, they're called the Upper Room Discourse, and, and they are a, they, they're revealing the heart of the Father through the Son, the heart of the Son to the Father, the inclusion of the disciples in the Son, and Jesus' prayer for us, uh, for the disciples of that day and all those who believe on his word. And so it's really wonderful how this begins. In verse 3, it says, Jesus, knowing that the Father had given all things into his hands and that he had come forth from God and he was going back to God, verse 4, rose from supper, laid aside his garments, taking a towel, he girded himself about. So in other words, knowing who he was, where he came from, where he was going, 
he could serve. And he did serve. And he's showing us that we can do the same thing. We can live and walk in this uh, authority of the Father by his love, by the power of the Holy Spirit. The identity of knowing who we are and whose we are and our destiny, knowing where we are going. Is that's what it says of Jesus, knowing that the Father had given all things into his hands. That's called authority. And that's why he sits at the right hand of the Father. He is the authority of God in his creation. And he is the high priest of, uh, of that creation. And now we've been brought into the priesthood, into him. Isn't it wonderful that said that he's made us a kingdom of priests unto our God to rule with him forever and ever for ceaseless ages, tumbling endlessly upon ceaseless ages in his creation. This was instituted because of his provision, and that's what we are celebrating in this holy week. So knowing that he, that the Father had given all things into his hands, authority. We have authority too in Christ. In Christ, we are made the righteousness of God. In Christ, we have been given the, the command and the mandate. In Christ, we are his ambassadors in his creation. And we are a kingdom of priests unto our God. But it says from it goes on from that. It says not only did he have that authority, it says that he had come forth from God. This was his identity. He knew who he was. Now it's it's interesting in his uh, humanity how he learned obedience, and these are things beyond our comprehension. How God became part of His own creation and experienced things in what we would call uh, chronological time, when He knew all things and He holds all creation in His hand, including time. But it says that this authority was followed by this identity. He knew where he came from. He knew who he was. And this is where we gain our identity. When we know who we are and whose we are, then we have confidence. We no longer live in insecurity and fear. We no longer wonder, why am I here? Where am I going? What's life all about? You know, the four primary questions that every human being asks in one way or another throughout his life, and every religion tries to answer, but it, has, but it all falls short except for Christianity. And that is, where did I come from? Origination. Of course, we know we came from the word of God. He, had, he, commu he communicated, he created, he said, God said, and it, God said it was good. So we have the question of origination. We have the question of morality. What's right? What's wrong? We have the question of meaning. What's it all about? Why do I get up in the morning? What's, what's life all about? And of course, we have the question of destiny. What happens after I die? Where do I go from here? So Jesus is revealing that he knew he came from the Father. He has authority. He knew that he that he had come forth from God. He has identity. And then it goes on to say, and that he was going back to God. He has destiny. See, when your future is sure, your now can be stable. When your future is hope-filled, your now can be purpose-filled. And Jesus was purpose-filled. So what did he do? He rose from supper. He laid aside his garments. And taking a towel, he girded himself. What did he do? He washed the disciples' feet. So for the last... 500 years in the history of the church, especially, there have been foot washing ceremonies, mostly centered on this Monday, Thursday. This is when he gave the command, when he showed his love, when he walked in his authority, and he did so by serving, and he washed their feet, the most menial task and the most necessary task. And so what God puts in front of us is our foot washing assignments. He puts in front of us opportunities for ministry to be like Jesus and to serve like Jesus. And so on this Monday, Thursday, as we prepare our hearts for Good Friday, Silent Saturday and Celebration Sunday, then we need to realize that we have um, authority in God, that we have confidence in our uh, identity in Christ and that we have destiny already settled in him. He said, even if you die, you don't really die if you're in him. And that is our hope. So now this is Monday, Thursday. Jesus had prepared for and led the disciples in the upper room for that for that, that last supper on the evening of Thursday. Now, you, the Jewish calendar, of course, begins as it indicates in Genesis. that There was evening and then there was morning, day one, evening and morning, day two. So the Jewish day begins at sunset. 
and last night at sunset, Passover began for the in Hebrew calendar. And so that's why it's perfect that we're celebrating this week. And uh, it's wonderful when both the church calendar for resurrection and, and the Holy Week line up with Passover week. Um, it should be that way all the time, but I'm, it's wonderful that it, it, when it does line up. So in my final uh, message that I'm going to do uh, for Holy Week tomorrow, uh, I'm going to talk about that, why Friday is good. We're going to look at the uh, the seven stages of betrayal and suffering of the passion of Christ and the passion communion in the last seven words of Christ on the cross. So we want to prepare our hearts for that. And so we begin, we begin by settling ourselves in Christ, his authority, his identity, and destiny is our authority, our identity, and our destiny. So Father, I pray that you would give us grace and wisdom to humble our hearts and receive and uh, live our lives in you. This is where life is at. When we pursue it outside of our relationship with you, then we, 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 we prepare ourselves for failure and for fear and for uh, disappointment. But Lord, in you, we have all authority. For all authority in heaven and earth has been given to you, and you have invited us to yourself so that we can live in you. That Let us love like you. Let us serve like you. Let us receive your new commandment that you gave to us, the mandate of your commandment to love one another as you have loved us. Lord, we want to be faithful witnesses so that all men will know that we are your disciples as we have love for one another. Lord bless you as you prepare your heart for Good Friday and Resurrection Sunday.